All right, the Tony X International team has been busy again, and there's been a bunch of updates and changes to the GitHub website. I think I have 141 on here, and there's been three updates since then. And I want to try out the new features, some speed optimizations, multiple speed optimizations, a bunch of games have been added. So I'm going to test both systems and just show a quick test. So as of 142, um, the change log was inside the package and you had to open it, but they added the changes right to the GitHub. So now you don't have to go into the change log and you can actually just read it so you know if you want to update or not. Um, looks like we got a speed optimization 143. A bunch of titles were added. Um, looks like there were some issues with non-stealth and mod chipped consoles. Um, they all got support. Uh, two consoles were added. SCPH 1000 and 3000 Japanese. 144. Um, the memory card hacks and FF9 loader now only takes up two saves instead of four save slots. That's awesome. Uh, then it looks like Nicholas Noble helped with that. Alright, so these games were added to the PlayStation 2. If you use 80 minute CDs, I believe, and now that's all I use is 80 minute CDs. That's all I ever get, it seems like. There was a workaround if you use 74 or 71 minute CDs, but I mean, who cares, really? Um, that's my opinion on that. Seems like most CDs you get these days are 80 minutes, so. But if you use Sony Hex International on a PlayStation 2, there's a lot of updates in 145. And more speed optimizations, so wow. Yeah, a lot's been going on with this. It looks like he's been busy. Oh, Medieval. I haven't uh, played that for a while. I love that game. Maybe I'll test that out. It looks like this doesn't apply to my console, but I missed that game. I'm going to try it. Uh, maybe I'll make some uh, Game Shark uh, file for it real quick. Okay, if you make a new user, or it's the first time you've done this, this is when you make you take the Game Shark codes paste them into a notepad, save it, and then you drag it over the ThinGen to generate your GameShark file. The first time you do this, Windows, since ThinGen's not signed, it might think it's a virus. It's not a virus. Um, but I am going to copy this into a folder and show you how I organize it on my PlayStation 2 now. I've refined uh, the way I do it. It's even faster. So now what I do is I go into the thumb drive. I put it in a folder so it's easy to uh, locate. Copy the whole folder. I put it into the free McBoot memory card. I have a GameShark file here, folder here. And I leave it in there, inside the folder. Now, don't accidentally copy the whole folder over. All you need is just one file. So we're going to, into the medieval folder that I made, and this is the file that you need. So I'm going to copy that and put it into MC1. See how fast that was? Now, this game only had a couple codes. I'm doing a test, but if this game had like 20 codes, it would save a lot of time and it would be better to use this versus like a CD. Some games even have 100 codes. So what I did is I put generated it on my PC, I put it on the USB drive, and then I put it on this for storage, and now I can always access it. And then I took it and I put it on this. So I have all my games all archived on this. So I don't need to plug this in anymore. I have a whole bunch of games archived on here. I was storing them on an SD card, but this is just easier. Because they're so small, they fit on the Freemink Boot memory card, no problem. But you can see all the games I got archived. And these are all Game Shark files. So I can use this as a Game Shark. And we'll test the Tony Hex. That's the actual exploit card. Next.
So I already showed this multiple times, so I'm just cutting to the chase. And this is Memory Card Annihilator. Flash in that. Now this I haven't mentioned, mentioned so much. Uh, it's my switch box. This is what allows me to switch back and forth between the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. It's overkill. It's 4K60 with HDR support. I bought, uh, since it was relatively inexpensive, I got one that was overkill because I wanted to be able to add a newer console to my game tower. You know, in case I wanted to add a PS5 or Xbox Series S or something. But honestly, I have so much to do with these that I really don't want one of those newer consoles yet. So they go down in price even more, so... All right, let's test one, four, five out. See if it's any faster. Um, got a couple speed optimizations. I'm pretty excited about that. Start with the lid open. All right, and now we got a message. Um, they added this a couple updates ago. You know, for dummies like me that forget to remove the card, and you know, remove the free memory card your console now so we move that and then you hit O to enable the game shark codes so I had three codes but it was actually uh, three lines but two codes one of the codes takes up two lines shut the lid you know I already had the card out in slot two Game shark card I leave in, in case I want to save a game. So this is with the new optimization. Looks like we got other people consulting on the international team now. I'm sure Alex Free's happy about that. Alright, that's working. Now let's test out the flash card. So I actually got a game here, 80s Arcade Japan, that was, this is, well, this was added. This was not playable um, with the old version that I had, 142. So now that I have 145 flashed on here, I already showed many videos flashing, so I skipped that. We're going to test this game out and see if it's working with this uh, new update. Oh, they took the ROM off. So it used to say ROM at the upper left. It doesn't say ROM anymore. It just says uh, international now. Looks like it's booting. Now sometimes the game will actually crash after the boot up screen. So let's get into an actual game. Going back in time to where a lot of games suck. There was a few good ones. Well, there are some I have nostalgia for. They probably all suck. It was like Sega Genesis areas when the games started getting good to me. There's a few of these that are just gems that were like on Commodore 64 and stuff that my dad introduced me to. It's kind of a cool intro. It's interesting, a lot of Japanese games are all in English, or almost 90% in English. I think this is one. I don't know if this has to do with 80s arcade, but... <laughs> Okay, it's going through. That's the Kung Fu Fighter game. Oh, maybe they're gonna do a little thing about every one. Oh no, just the Kung Fu game, okay. Yeah, I think this is actually Choplifter. They just called it Super Cobra. So I'll be playing that, but it looks like it's working.
Nice. All right. And that is International on the Slim and Fat. Uh, 145. It looks like they've done quite a few things. Added some game support. Um, that 80s game isn't the only game they added. There might be some other games you guys like. But I love that these uh, changes have been added right to the GitHub homepage. Well, International GitHub homepage. So that's so cool. All right, guys, bye.